Hi, welcome to Cybersecurity Unlocked. Uh, today, my guest is Eric Tan. He has spent the last 13 years in technology sales, uh, the last 10 of which in cybersecurity. He is now the sales director for Cyber Reason, an endpoint protection specialist. Um, based in Singapore, uh, Cyber Reason has been making huge waves in the endpoint protection space uh, in Japan and Singapore. Hey, how you doing? Good, good to see good. you. Good to see you again. Hopefully. Yes, yes. Um, so how's, uh, how's this year been for you? Being in sales, I mean, obviously I'm in sales myself, but um, yeah, it's a real challenge trying to conduct these meetings and close over Zoom and, and Microsoft Teams. How, how's it been for you? Well, it's, it's, been, it's been extremely new this year, I think. And then um, I think that we can speak for everyone in sales, right? Mm. Um, we were so used to, uh, and uh, yeah, we we're so used to human interaction, right? Yeah. Face-to-face meetings. And then now suddenly, all of a sudden, everything pivoted across yeah. to um, kids screaming in the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wives yelling, uh, the water's boiling, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's been extremely tough, um, uh, to be honest. But I think coming out of it, um, you know, a couple of months after the initial lockdown, yeah. right, or the circuit breaker in Singapore's context, yeah. um, I think everyone is slowly getting into the groove, right, yeah. and getting used to it. Yeah. It's kind of like um, uh, being overly used, um, the uh, new norm, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And I think it's been extremely great so far, especially for um, a young team, mm-hmm. right, um, uh, from Cyber Reason uh, and a very small team as well, yeah. right, that it's only the next handful of us that's based in Asia, that this whole situation um, seems to have flattened the uh, entire playing field, right? Mm-hmm. We, no longer have, um, we no longer have that... Um, uh, the issue of not being able to fly in country since no one's flying. Yeah. Right. We are all meeting online, mm-hmm. and it seems that we have found a sweet spot in terms of getting everyone's time as well, because everyone's committed in front of their workstations. Yeah. For the next eight, ten hours. That's true, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there's almost no way someone should say no for yeah. a meeting. Yes. Right. As long as you put them in a meaningful context. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, one of the challenges I first found when I came out to uh, um, Singapore like eight years ago now, um, the FaceTime was was so important, um, I, I found. Like I was able to get to the sort of closing of a deal, you know, over the phone, you know, maybe one meeting. But out here, you know, in Singapore, I found it's like four or five meetings before you start to get commitment. And yeah, I mean, so I thought, yeah, over Zoom and Microsoft Teams, getting that commitment, particularly from a new client or a prospect, like how have you been able to, I guess, sort of get to, yeah, get to that point? Yeah, I fully agree with you. And I think um, it's, it's probably the Asian culture to blame. Yeah. Right. Um, trust is, uh, is something that is uh, not easily um, uh, given, right. Mm-hmm. Or not easily earned. Yeah. Uh, which is why the, you know, the uh, multiple occurrences in terms of meetings and mm-hmm. getting to know you better. And yeah. of course that face to face interaction once again. Yeah. Right. So, it's a lot more work now, but mm-hmm. a lot more meaningful work, right? That, you know, in every context of a Zoom engagement, right? Or web meeting, um, we've got to ensure that, you know, we are really bringing something tangible yeah. and something meaningful for our clients or for our partners, mm-hmm. right? To the conversation, how you always work to over communicate, mm-hmm. ensuring that, you know, the message is clear, you leave no stone unturned, right? You go into the granularity of details, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and at the same time, not being um, uh, distracted, right? Uh, over you know, good food, drinks. Yeah. Um, yeah. A waitress walking by, mm-hmm. or what not in a restaurant, right? It's just you, the screen, mm-hmm. and your prospect. In yeah. that sense, yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's it's always about that over commitment. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, over communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> over communication that is um, that is extremely important. Yeah. Yeah, and how we can follow through, mm-hmm. right? Um. um yeah, properly in depth in, in in details. Yeah, I think um, that's yeah. that's something that we have found to be extremely helpful for us, extremely useful in us gaining trust across new contexts. Yeah, right, new prospects and uh, closing uh, new contracts as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah in the yeah. recent months. So okay. yeah, cool. So tell us a bit more about the the role that you do today and the the sort of the level that you're selling to. Is it CIOs or CISOs? I guess it probably depends on the you know the size of the company or the maturity. Yep, you're right. Um, so we have been so we have been super lucky to have, of course, executive sponsorships, right? Very good partnerships where it brings us to the C-suite. Mm-hmm. Um, in this last few months, um, the entire 
demographics um, of uh, how companies operate has shifted, mm-hmm. where C-suites are empowering their ground guys a lot more, their managers, right, even their analysts a lot more. Having the fact that you know no one's no longer no one's in the office anymore, right? Yeah. Um, you have to give every single level within the organization and the team a good level of autonomy, mm-hmm. right? Allowing everyone to be um, highly efficient, especially in current times. Yeah, yeah. So um, we found it, of course, very helpful when you cover the suites, um, the C suites all the way down. Mm-hmm. But it's even more important that we we are now given the ability to cover across the organization right um, all the way down to the guy that actually looks at the um, um, looks at the alerts right to the CISO himself or if not across not just to the technical buyer but across to the economic buyer as well hmm. yeah, I think that uh, that holistic coverage um, in terms of the buy-in right and the understanding of the product and whatnot mm-hmm. um, it's um, yeah it's it's even more important in current context right it's yeah. no longer just about you know, you cover the top guy, the top guy says yes, everyone follows. Yeah. Right? But rather, you know, how we can achieve the level of comfort yeah. and uh, confidence. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, um, uh, when it gets to that. And um, going back to the, um, going back to the earlier question again, right? Everyone is um, so available right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? In that sense, of course, we are all stacked back to back. We are all mm-hmm. um, death by Zoom. Yeah. Right? Many will say. I yeah, know. But yeah. yeah, it's also because Tied of that. that screens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're able to enable, you know, um, uh, make sure we share due proper information, mm-hmm. uh, that comfort, uh, the level of comfort once again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how sort of technical are you? Do you because I know that um, a lot of uh, sales guys in, in cyber, they tend to be kind of ex programmers or software engineers or have come from sort of a technical background. How sort of, you know, sort of do you, how, yeah, how well do you sort of understand the, the technology that underpins? Mm. Um, so I try my best. Yeah, I try my best. Um, a lot of reading. It's not yeah. easy. Um, I'm I'm marketing by nature. Okay. Right. Um, so zero tech, but of course, uh, I I guess it helps being a geek. Right. Yeah. You read into everything. Yeah. Which I guess is also what makes um, this industry or um, this line of work so interesting. Yeah. Because it's not like you are selling something that's uh, the same mm. right across the last ten years. Yeah. Right. And uh, very little variations. Right. Yeah. Um, technology is uh, constantly changing. Mm. Right. We started from a world where it's always about everything faster. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, higher density into everything else, and then moving into everything lighter. Mm-hmm. Um, extracting it out of the uh, physical body itself. Right. Yeah. From appliances now into um, uh, where most companies are already have already done. Or it's in the midst of a, um, a what they call a, a digital transformation. Yeah. Right. So, and that requires every individual salespeople within this industry to constantly keep themselves abreast of the technology. Yeah. Constantly be reading, and then of course not just understanding your own product, right? Because that's just drinking the Kool Aid. Mm-hmm. How you understand across. Yes. Your competition. Yeah. And even more important, how you understand the entire ecosystem, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think for sales guys, um, it, it, it would definitely help going into the bits and bytes, yeah. right? But then that, of course, then lengthens um, or it, it crosses over the engagement where, you know, it's, we do have the experts within yeah. the organization itself yes. to help you with that. Yeah, yeah. So more importantly, it's understanding, having the proper understanding across the overarching architecture, yeah. how that can help. How it affects the business or how it disrupts the business. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, yeah. And 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 then you, you, you can really become like a part consultant, right? Yeah. To the customer. And sure. and I guess that would help with a lot more meaningful conversations. Yeah. 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 Sure. So what did you um what did you study then? What how, how did you get sort of started? Oh, um yeah, so it's interesting. Uh, uh my very first job was actually um a third-party contractor to a local energy company okay where singapore first liberalized our energy market right so it's not just with um it's not just uh, your power provider out of singapore power mm-hmm. but um you, you had guys like sinoco energy saraya mm-hmm. capital so on and so forth mm-hmm. right and uh, we were the billing agent so i had to like deal with um, um i had to deal with people customers over the phone every day um, uh, we were a contact center Oh, okay. Right, so customer service, I pay your bills, so yeah, on and yeah, so yeah, forth. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, that was first job straight out of national service. 
Okay, great. Yeah, and then um, I got introduced yeah. into um, a distributor in Singapore, mm -hmm. right? A local distributor in Singapore. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, found it extremely fun because we were selling everything under the sun. Yeah. Yeah, and back in that day, there was actually, there was literally a yellow pages, oh. right? a, a phone directory yeah. of tech companies where you yeah. literally call, hi, Eric Tan, calling yeah. from this. I sell HP, I sell IBM, I sell everything else. Wow. Right? Um, and we can do, um, and we can provide you with not just that, a value at the distributor, so on and so forth, right? Yeah. Did you knock on doors as well? Um, Any door knocking? <laughs> <laughs> literally, no, but yeah. Technically, we did that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We called everyone under the sun. That's the best place to learn, though. I think anybody that's come from a, you know, that is in sales today that has learned in that kind of environment, that harsh environment where you're dealing with, you know, cold leads. It's, right. uh, yeah, battle, battle hardens you for the, uh, for the real stuff. <laughs> it makes you more hardy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, I wouldn't say it's harsh, right? It's definitely a very good learning ground mm. um, because it was from those uh, short few years that you tend to know everyone within the industry mm -hmm. and understand very briefly across all your product set. Yeah. Right. From servers to storage. Yeah. Um, back in the, uh, I think it was um, somewhere 12 years ago, right? There was a huge hype initially in the mm -hmm. uh, storage world. Yeah. Right. It still is right now, right? Virtualized and everything else, yeah. hyperconverge. But back then, you know, how, how um, uh, storage capacity were growing exponentially. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm how they have to be even faster when it comes to data retrieval and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that came big, subsequently to networks, subsequently to uh, network security, which is mm -hmm. where I found myself subsequently. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. And spend the last 10 years in where, you know, it was network security and then slowly moving into something that's more um, endpoint based, right? Yeah. The last line of defense, we call it. Yeah. 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 So awesome. And then what was it that uh, attracted you to uh, cyber reason? Well, for starters, we are extremely young, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, um, in I've I've worked for, um, I've worked for growing companies. I've worked for mature companies, right? Super small teams to super large team, cross functional, where you know everyone has a part they play, mm -hmm. right? But never in some, never in an organization that is as young and as dynamic as Cyber Reason. Yeah. Right. Um, we just started our uh, Asia business two years back, and it was managed out of Australia. Yeah. And only last year, you know, we actually had a, a Singapore Asia team. Right. Right. So it's super new, which makes it super fun. Right? Yeah. Because you get you get responsibilities cross functional. Yeah. As much as you're a sales guy, right? Very often you turn into half a project manager. Yeah. Right. You 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 definitely have to take on the channels head where you build sure. the partner ecosystem marketing. And yeah. everything else, so it's which like makes a blank it, canvas. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Sounds right. Exciting, yeah, yeah, and um, uh, the team would literally come together and paint what we would expect the future of mm -hmm. the Asia team to be. Yeah, yeah, and uh, on top of that, of course, it's a, it's a very, it's a very um, strongly vested company. Yeah. Right by you know a breed of uh, fantastic VCs. Yeah. Right. So guys like Spark Capital. Lockheed mm -hmm. Martin, yeah, right? and of course uh, one of our major investors, SoftBank, yeah, right. Which um, we found that relationship uh, through um, servicing them as a customer. Okay. Initially, right, right, um, and and they found something very unique in what the uh, what the uh, technology was built from ground up from, mm -hmm. right, uh, with a good breed of uh, you know fantastic knowledge by our founders, mm -hmm. uh, Leo, our CEO, Jonathan, Yossi where they were not just uh, offensive cyber ops, yeah. but they were also a data scientist. Yeah. Right? Um, and so SoftBank found that very sweet spot in it, mm -hmm. saw potential in the company, and they were investors in two different rounds, right? Series B and Series E. Right. Yeah, which uh, uh, brought us to where we are today, expanding right. you know, into worldwide operations, yeah. yep, and, and, um, and, and striking out very meaningful partnerships yeah. all around the world. Yeah, that's mm. definitely a good backer. So how how did, exactly how did they sort of trans you know um, transfer them from being sort of a customer th then to being a partner? Was it just was there a sort of a conscious pitch or a sales pitch to the people that you were delivering it to, or was it more sort of organic? Yeah, I think it was um, it was a bit of both. Yeah, right. Where um, it, of course um, 
SoftBank being a large conglomerate, right? Yeah, yeah. A, a huge conglomerate where, you know, as an enterprise, as a customer, mm. it would definitely make sense yeah. um, to anchor in. Yeah. Right. And with them seeing the value of the mm. business, mm -hmm. right, the value of the technology, um, how, how much further ahead we are, right, or the potential for us yeah. to be ahead against, you know, the entire landscape today. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, they saw that sweet spot, right? And of course, yeah. um, it was it, it's definitely something that SoftBank was moving into mm -hmm. in terms of their investments uh, across technologies, right? And um, what would be what would mean for them being you know the next latest and greatest, if you would. Yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a company I've been following actually for maybe two or three years now, and uh, yeah, with a lot of interest. And one of the things I noticed was quite interesting is how they're able to sort of break into new territories, you know. I wouldn't say it's obviously easy. I mean, from the outside looking in, it looks like, you know, you've done it pretty seamlessly. What, what's been the sort of the secret to, I mean, you've touched on it a little bit with the SoftBank partnership, but, you know, what are the other things that they've done sort of fundamentally that's made it, a, you know, um, a success in terms of breaking into a new market? Mm, um, so across the last couple of years, I think it was a lot of uh, incubation period for enterprises to slowly um, explore, mm -hmm. right, what EDR means yeah. right, and what it means for them. Right, uh, fully acknowledging that you know the prevention stack alone is no longer good enough. Yeah. Right, and you 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 needed that true last line of defense. What mm -hmm. happens if there was a compromise and whatnot? Right, and um, into you know this, um, this two three years um, up until now, right, and it's still going. The market is uh, getting a lot more mature. Mm -hmm. Where there's a, uh, uh, there is a um, a very organic move into the adoption. Mm -hmm. Right, and. So with that and us being in this space, right, um, being very blessed that we are a young company with a fantastic team um, uh, from product engineering to R&D, right, and, and of course our very famous um, uh, threat research team, Nocturnus, right, that, you know, were able to find um, nation-based exploits, right, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Coupling that together um, and the current situation itself where guys are working from home, Mm -hmm. right you have no ability of managing your security operations and no ability to hire proactively right good security resources that a that enterprises literally needed a highly automated platform yeah right that is uh, self analyzing that gives you meaningful signals instead of noise where it's yeah. how traditional technologies would be built on yeah Right, um, you know, I can I, I can show you more, I, you see more, right? I will alert you more, but yeah. whether it's contextual or not, yeah. right? That's um, uh, that's yet to be seen, right? So yeah, I guess with that very unique um, basis of our technology, right, we were able to help a lot of uh, enterprises in current times, yeah. right? Having it automated, having it super simple, a level one analyst being able to you know punch above their weight. Yeah. to do what a level two or level three is required. Right. I guess that found us the sweet spot in terms of the uh, technical win. Mm. Right. And of course, then it goes down to the people on the ground, right? Yeah. Um, you know, everyone all across um, the entire sales, marketing, right? And cross-functional into our services, yeah. across into our product management, product engineering. We are all coming together, yeah. right? To help, to help our customers with what they need. Yeah. yeah. So we are not that, 800 pound gorilla yeah, right, yeah, that, yeah you know i said this is it's the end all be all yeah right we, we will literally go into accounts this is what we have i'd like to know what you need mm. right and if it's something that we can build for you in the near term we'll build it for you right yeah. because it's not supposed to be a a a buyer seller relationship it's mm. a partnership that we want yeah, right yeah. especially with a lot of these um meaningful enterprises all around the world yeah right uh, and even more so here in singapore where you know we're trying to expand the asia yeah. footprint mm -hmm. that yeah we're not just selling them a product right we are literally hand holding them into a partnership um you know loads of uh feature requests right mm. custom builds just to feed our customers uh, environment yeah i guess that's how you know holistically as a company we all f um we are all finding success together yeah yeah, yeah. Right? of course we do have pitfalls right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah i think we're finding a lot more success yeah, yeah and it's been yeah 
a crazy, crazy year. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Seems like you're taking it in your stride though. And I guess the company, what like you mentioned, is it's still quite small and lean and mobile and able to kind of adapt to, to market situations and customer needs and, and that kind of thing. One of the interesting things I know I've noticed about the um, Israel market as well, and obviously you know, that's where you know sort of cyber reason essentially is born. There's um, it, there's so much talent in cybersecurity in in Israel, having you know recruited for sort of SOC managers and level three SOC analysts. And uh, one of the things I've learned as well is that um, part of their national service uh, is that they're learning about cybersecurity. So they're doing sort of cybersecurity placement. So they're building like scene production and doing, you know, incident response and threat intelligence. I think it's sort of a, sort of a wonderful scheme. I mean, I don't know exactly how long they've been doing it for, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, yeah, talent um, and a lot of innovation that's happening in uh, Israel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so where, and that's a, a very... Um, a good point um, uh, essentially our three founders right and a whole breed of um, the uh, talents within the company mm. right um, they are all they were all previously part of um, uh, be it a military background yep. right, with the IDF mm. right, the Israeli Defense Force right, and um, of course the uh, famous unit 8200 yeah right across to guys from NSA right so on so forth mm. um, it's that whole breed and I think with the IDF, what's unique about them is, of course, it's a nation that's constantly under uh, compromise, right? Yes. Or under attacks, right? Yeah, Everyone yeah. is looking upon them, right? Yeah. Um, there's something they want. Mm. And from that, which is also where our founders saw is that, you know, defensive approach is not good enough, right? Yeah. And they needed to take on that offensive approach yeah. in, in, in defending yes. the nation, right? Yeah, and yeah. and it, from a nation-based cyber defense, right, it's so noisy. Yeah, right. You get um, you get exploits, compromises, right, attempts, yeah. right, from all facets, right. Be it through your network, through your emails, right, through your nation infrastructure, right, uh, power, right, mm. utilities, telcos, so forth. Yeah, that it makes it extremely difficult, right, and yeah. you you require a huge team mm. in order to do so. Yeah. Right. And 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 that and that was one of the very key learnings they took away yeah. from in the days of their service mm. that they needed something that's highly automated. Yeah. Right. That tells you that 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 triages all this noise. Yeah. Right. Making them into meaningful signals mm. and allowing you to react very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's um um one of the key things why the um. um we have a lot of uh, very good Israeli-based technology yeah. that's in the market right now. Yeah. Right. It's not just Cyber Reason, but many, many others. Oh as yeah, well. there's lots. Yeah. yeah, lots of others. There, you don't realize they're, they've come from Israel as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah, going back to sort of Cyber Reason, and you mentioned you know some of the partnerships that you've had um, in in helping you to sort of break into new territories. How sort of important is you know sort of partnering with like consulting firm? Like, do you get involved with any kind of like MSSPs or? Uh, yeah, sort of management consulting firms is that is that quite an important part of the strategy as well? Oh, absolutely. Um, while while the team is out um, in the field, you know, um, are going through your relationships, mm. um, you know, going back to you know some of the customers you know, right? Um, we we will never be able to reach out in scale, mm. right? And I think very early on we mentioned right in Asia, trust is extremely important. Yeah. And through partners, um, you know, they have um, long-standing relationships where they service, right, and provide, um, you know, be it products, services across to some of their customers, where it becomes a very, very important um, essence w uh, when it comes to expanding businesses in Asia. Yeah. Right. And um, of course, um, you know, it's the sheer ability of scale that we mm. can reach out, right? Yeah. You know, if I had, you know, five meaningful partnerships, what would that mean? Mm. Yeah, and uh, and I think being channels centric, right, also means that you build a very meaningful ecosystem where we can all help each other. Yeah, when it comes to solving a customer's problem, because yeah. again, cyber reason today it's uh, uh, an EPP product, right? Mm. Uh, a technology, mm -hmm. right? We have we have the full suite of services to help our customers when it comes to managing their security operations, mm -hmm. right? The full suite of uh, assessments and consultancy, but all these are built not in IMSIC to provide directly to customers. Mm -hmm. right? Of course we can, yeah. but more so to ramp our partners up, yeah. right? our partner ecosystem, how we can support them from a layer three, um, from an L3 perspective, yeah. right? while they actually have the ability and the skill set, right? Where mm -hmm. we impart 
to provide those services to the customer. Sure. Yeah. It then it provides you know um, localized in time zone support for our customers, mm-hmm. right? Of course, uh, meaningful business for our channel partners as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That allows us to scale. Right. Right. And. Um, uh, I guess it's not so prevalent in um, the uh, western side of the globe, mm-hmm. right? But in Asia, uh, we have the next um, easily the next five to ten different spoken languages when you enter in country, yeah, right. Uh, and if you're in different parts of that same country, it, um, the uh, annotations and slang may be also different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That leveraging on uh, you know local partners, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, with that local knowledge, yeah, uh, the relevancy to the customers, yeah, yeah. would be even more so important for yeah. us yeah yeah it's often for, for new companies coming in i mean i've seen a lot of companies that just in my small space of time that i've been here you know come here and try and you know break into the asian market and then fail and then pack up shop and then go back to europe or go back to the us and it's often you know probably the one of the more challenging um yeah sort of markets to, to break because of the cultural nuances that you have between you know singapore and then vietnam and then thailand and then indonesia um and then obviously japan and korea but uh, yeah, it seems like um, yeah, Cyber Reason obviously you know making good strides. Yep. So what does the uh, the rest of this year look like in 2021 in terms of the you know the challenges that you're likely to be faced with? Um, so uh, now and beyond for Cyber Reason, um, it's uh, it's 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 super interesting, right? Um, it's going to be a, an extremely fun time in expanding mm-hmm. right across the whole region. Um, we've just incorporated right um, as a local Singapore entity. Okay. Right, just um, a month back. Right, um, it, it was supposed to be much earlier. Mm-hmm. Right? Everything slowed down. Yeah. Right, with the circuit breaker and whatnot. But you know, we still managed to um, uh, move ahead. Right. So um, uh, the plans from the management is definitely to you know heavily expand. Right. Yep. Uh, into a very serious team here, um, uh, providing functional groups all across. Right, so that's definitely um, one of which we are, you know, uh, very much looking forward into, right? Um, I guess from now till next year itself, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be any different in terms of how we are proactively going out for partnerships, mm-hmm. right? Um, of course, acquiring new logos, mm-hmm. um, and at the same time, how we can um, strike out meaningful initiatives, right? Yeah. Um, down the road as well, right? yeah. in terms of uh, enabling and powering the next generation of cybersecurity experts, yeah. right? Um, yeah, I think uh, these are very meaningful initiatives that um, every um, technology vendor, right, should yeah. always partake, right, and will and, and will partake, yeah. right, as they are, are beginning to break into new grounds yeah. and new countries. Okay, mm. awesome. Sounds good. Sounds like a good plan. All right, well, uh, I wish you yeah, great success for, for the rest of this year and, and beyond. And yeah, thanks so much for coming down and, and speaking with me today. I had a great time. Thank you. All right, thanks, Thank Eric. Thank you. Cheers.